Good morning, and we want to welcome everyone to this very special Thanksgiving service. We invite you to join us in standing as we commence the service. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Good morning once again, and we want to welcome each and every one to the Mandel Seventh-day Adventist Church. Here we are about to celebrate the Thanksgiving service for the life of Sister Ethelyn King-Smith, our dearly beloved and dearly departed. We are thankful to God for those who have come forward. We want to welcome each of you, whether you're here in church or you're following us virtually. We just pray that the Spirit of God will manifest himself amongst us, and as we fellowship together, the essence of our presence here will give the understanding to the Smiths family as they grieve and mourn the loss of their beloved family that we are all in this thing together with you. So we want to welcome everyone and pray that our collective support at this time will echo in the confidence that we all have in Christ that very soon he that shall come will come. To keep us going in the service, we want to use as our opening song, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That's on the first page after you open your program. My hope is built on nothing less. Yeah. 
Let us pray. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh Lord, we are so thankful and truly grateful that we serve a God who loves us with an everlasting love. A God who cares and a God who understands. And with that in mind, O oh Lord, we want to present this Thanksgiving service into your divine care. We ask that each and every element of this program will be guided by you. I pray that everything that is done will be pleasing and honorable in your sight. And we ask you now, O oh Lord, that you will surround us with your love, that you will saturate us completely with your unchanging grace and mercy, and that you will lead, guide, and direct in all things, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good. Good morning. I join Pastor Peterkin in saying that we have gathered here together to celebrate the life of a truly exceptional lady. And as we progress throughout this program, we just allow me to give some guidance as to what uh, is ahead of us as you read it on your program. So at this time, we are going to have our first scripture reading, uh, which will come to us from Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6, and that will be read by Miss Debian Sterling Smith. Following Sister Smith, we will have a tribute done on behalf of the Mandeville Seventh-day Adventist Church by Sister Sandra Peterkin. And following that tribute, we will then invite Sister Lorna Brown to do our second scripture, which comes to us from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 7. Good morning. The first scripture reading, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fare no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I am indeed honored and consider myself to be highly privileged to do the church's tribute for Sister Smith. 
Now, this tribute is indeed a church, church's tribute to her, as it is a compilation of comments made by various church members. On meeting Sister Smith, one finds that she, perf she personifies one of a quiet, soft spirit. And she was all um, spoke very quiet. And she was also a pleasant person with a kind and caring de demeanor. Her personality dep depicts that of humility. Many tested to that over and over. Humili um, kindness and trustworthiness. This they stated was mingled with determination, devotion, sacrifice, and it was encapsulated in faith and patience. As I spoke to different church members, one thing that stood out was evangelism. They said that her personality epitomized in a person who had the call of an evangelist. This was indeed the gift she received from the Holy Spirit as clearly illustrated in how this church member stated how he met Sister Smith. And I'll just highlight it so that you will see this aspect of her being brought out. He stated, she was a regular virtual participant every Sabbath, Wednesday, and Sunday nights meetings. From a promotion for total membership involvement in evangelism, she contacted the church office, registering her interest to commence friendship evangelism. Upon completing the litmus, litmus test, she began knocking on her neighbor's doors and decided to strengthen the bond between them. Eventually, engaging them into Bible study among other things. And among other things, she gave them the book, Sunday is not the Bible Sabbath by Vance Farrell. Then she requested meeting with her three Bible students, one of which was a pastor. This was short-lived prior to her illness. So here we see based on this meeting, the, um, how much individuals thought that she was an evangelist. They also said that she was also a prayer warrior because on her 83rd birthday, she invited family, friends, and neighbors to join in a prayer of gratitude. A prayer of gratitude for the fact that she has seen her 83rd birthday. An evangelist she was because she invited family, friends, and neighbors to meet her, not only in this life, but in the life to come. One church sister with such passion also shared her evangelistic trust as well. She said that she invited persons who once walked with the Lord to return to their former relationship with God. This, this church sister testified as to how she called her estranged husband on a regular basis, pleading with him to return to his first love with God. This the sister found to be commendable and very appreciative on her path. Others stated that she was always on the mission of discipling others. A medical missionary also was one of the attributes that came out as I spoke to different church members. Well, she labored among the sick, especially in the capacity as a nurse where she brought hope and peace to those with whom she ministered to, and she made every effort to point them to Jesus Christ. This resulted in her establishing the Mandeva Caregivers, where she taught many the art of caring for the sick, and to show how much 
the missionary, medical missionary work was a part or very dear to her, she included natural rem the use of natural remedies as a part of the school's curriculum. In church, she was a very, very active member of the health ministry department and she actively participated in organizing numerous programs. Not only was the adults that she had a zeal for in terms of evangelism, but the youth as well. Many were able to tell me that she had a great zeal for the success of the youth and I was involved in training them to have a strong purpose in life and to have strong faith in God. And after she spent time training them and pointing them to God, she didn't just leave them there. She followed up with these individuals to see how they were progressing. As an elder, yes, Sister Smith was an elder in the church. She led out in various departments in the church and in the overall administration of the church's activities. Sister Smith will be greatly missed. Sister Smith was greatly loved. Sister Smith touched the hearts of each and every one of us. And in closing, I'll just tell you something else about Sister Smith using her, using her name. First name, Ethelyn. E, enthusiastic. She was an energizer, always identified new projects for the cause of humanity. Example, commenced mentoring a teenage mother in collaboration with the Women's Center. T, truthful. She was a firm believer in being true, irrespective of the cost. H, heavenly. No turning back. I must be about my father's business. In my life's plan, bringing the good news of salvation to my neighbors. Loyalty. L, loyalty and loving. Example like Ruth. She, pers she personified loyalty and love. First to God, family, and friends. Immaculate. She did daily whatever it took to make a healthy and happy physical plant, husband, and self. Nothing ever seemed out of place. E, neighborly. I mean N, neighborly. It is in her DNA to be hospitable. She would go beyond expectation to others felt to make others feel special and e electrified a woman of no mean order that is constant in igniting a contagious thrills advices affection teaching life skills to those who come in contact with her a, philanthrop a philanthropist she is a gem and with these thoughts in mind tribute remembrance of Sister Smith, the church would like to extend their condolences and sympathy to the family. Let us remember her. Let us follow her footsteps. Let us evangelize like what she did. And I know her heart would be thrilled. Thank you. Scripture reading comes from Revelation 21, reading from verses 1 to 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, 
and there was no more seas. And I saw John, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst at the heaven of the fountain of the waters of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Certainly a passage that gives us great hope and encouragement in this time. This time we are going to have a pair of tributes, first done by Sister Monica Grant, and following Sister Grant, we'll have our second tribute done by Sister Carlene Panton. Thank you. I could say about Ethelyn King Smith that she was almost my relative because after a while I realized that one of my uncles was married to one of her aunts. So we're almost relatives. <sighs> Ethelyn King Smith. I started working very closely with her in Sabbath school about in the late. 70s, early 80s. She was Sabbath school superintendent. I was her secretary. And many Sundays were spent in visiting the members of the Sabbath school, seeing how they were fearing and to do what could be done. Then later on, she became a member of my choir. And it was good. Also, out of that choir, we had a trio that was called the East Sisters. Ethelyn was one of them. Another friend of ours who predeceased her, her middle name started with an E. My middle name also started with an E. So we were known as the East Sisters and we sang in this church and otherwise. Sister Peter King has touched on most of what I would have said, but one word she used, determination. She was determined, and because of this determination, it drove her to um, the founding of Mandeville Caregivers, where persons were trained in not just nursing, caregiving, but also early childhood education. I had the opportunity of working with her for about three years at Mandeville Caregivers, and that's where I met Pat. And many young persons 
male, female, were able to gain an advantage and to move forward where they never had that opportunity before. And I am convinced that they are out there doing productive service. Right, Pat? Okay, typical example. But she gave of her best. She served many offices here in church. And as Sister Peter Kintosh, and she was an elder. I don't guess she was elder until she died, because that was not taken away from her. But she lived a full life. She served humanity well. And Brother CL, Tony, Steve, my two young men, God continue to cheer you. And I've been praying for you that he will keep you firm, steadfast. Stand by daddy. Keep him strong. Because he's still strong. And God bless all of you. Keep on keeping on. Thank you. Just a minute, one last thing. She was a member of my Sabbath school class, class number six, right there. And on Sabbath, when she's with you, say, teacher, and she'd make her point. Good morning, everyone. I stand here with mixed feelings. Um, Sister Smith, who we affectionately call Nurse Smith, has been a friend and confidant to my mother, Mrs. Esme Melbourne, and Carlene Panzon. Our family are really grieving at this time at her loss. However, I must say a few words on behalf of mom and my family. Um, Nurse Smith was always a very warm person, had a very captivating, cheerful smile, and she was just a generous soul. Um, as mentioned before, um, the E Sisters was formed with four persons, Sister Grant, Sister Elaine Williams, um, my mother, and Sister Ethelyn Smith. And at the moment, you know, we stand alone with just two members of that group. Uh, she was a very caring neighbor and friend until, you know, she was even more personal where she became a part of us being even a family member. We could call on her at any time of the day or night or morning, whatever it was, she was always there. And especially when my father was ill, she was always there for him. And um, ironically, she passed on his birthday. Um, she was a very compassionate, vibrant, and gracefully caring to one and all. Uh, it's important that we should note that it's that we create our memories every day. Every second of our life, we're creating memories, and that's a special treasure, and that's something, something that mommy would love to say. Okay, she is not physically here, and emotionally, she is broken, so she is not able to be here today. But I would just like to say that we should not ask how she died. But what kind of life did she live? I must say to Brother Sale, Tony, and his wife, Steve, and your family, that God is always here for you, and so are we. Thank you, Sister Grant, and... Sister Panton, I'm sure the family is very appreciative of the kind and thoughtful words that were expressed by you both. This time, an offering will be collected, and this offering will go in aid of our vibrant, hardworking, dedicated community service 
department. And while the offering is being collected, I'm inviting us all to sing together the awesome hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. It's a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Sister Ethlyn King Smith will be read by Sister Patricia Reed. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are honoring, celebrating, and remembering Stephen and Beatrice King, third child, or might I say, the belly wash, as Jamaican would call it. Born on January 12, 1939, in the cool, cool hills of Blue Mountain, Manchester. She was indeed the child of a king, hence her name, Ethlyn 
Antoinette King Simit, otherwise known as Lynn, nurse, Sister Simit, mom, and for me, she was referred to as my Mandeville mommy. Mommy was a woman of grace and courage, a fearless fighter who believed that every senior citizen should be cared for and loved regardless of their circumstances. It didn't matter what happened when they were younger. As long as they were a senior, they should be cared for. To many, she was just a woman, a nurse, a teacher, a church sister, a choir member. But to us, she was superwoman, a confidant, a friend, an advocate, a lawyer. She was simply next to perfect. Mom has a magical way of bringing joy every time she walked into a room. No one who met her could forget her smile and words of encouragement. During her early years, growing up in Blue Mountain, Manchester, her older sister, Sylvia, who now resides in England, spoke highly of her. Even though one of her sisters predeceased her, she was very close with Sylvia and also had a bond that was unimaginable to her niece, Yvonne Foster, and grandnephew, Lee Foster. Her education started at Belfield All Aid School, now Belfield Primary. She then worked as a teacher in training, or what they called back then, pupil teacher, at Kendall All Aid School. Her love for nursing allowed her to want to venture into that career. Hence, her nursing career began with a short stay as a student nurse at Kingston Public Hospital. On returning home from Kingston, her father, being the king that he really was, looked at her and made a decision that she needed to spread her wings and fly. Hence, he made the decision to send her to England, where she enrolled as a student nurse at Central Middlesex Hospital, and that was in London, from 1961 to 1964. She then went on to become a pupil midwife at Marston Green Maternity Hospital in Birmingham. She completed her studies and decided to return to Jamaica in 1966. And might I say, for more reasons than one. You'll hear in a little while. Mom worked as a staff nurse at University Hospital and also Mandeville Public Hospital for several years. During her stay, she held various positions, such as education officer at the Family Planning Board, counselor at the Women's Center right here in Mandeville, and health education officer for Manchester Health Department. In 1985, mom decided that she needed more as a related to education. Hence, she enrolled in the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, where she completed a diploma in community health education sponsored by Pan American Health Organization. Her love for teaching and mentoring led her to becoming involved with Knox and Spalding's Community College where she served as a nursing instructor for the enrolled nursing program. Mom wanted more as related to service. Hence, in 1999, her life of service prompted her to develop one-of-a-kind community intervention program known as Mandeville Caregivers School of Practical Nursing. This was as a result to train and certify practical nurses to assist further in the health and development of Jamaica. This program was one of the best, one of a kind. As a result of this, it was sponsored by Heart NSTA Trust 
and fully funded. Mrs. King Simmit served as founder and coordinator for more than 12 years. To date, more than 600 individuals have been trained and certified by Mandeva Caregivers. It was right there at Mandeva Caregivers that I met her. I was one of the instructor that taught nursing. And on that day when she interviewed me and I gave her my name, she said, you are my daughter, Patricia. I've always said if I had a girl, she would be named Patricia. So here you are now. So you are my daughter. Hence the name, my Mandeville mother. Mommy knew from a very early age that she wanted her own family. Hence, it was a jubilation when she met and fell in love with the charming Clinton Smith and decided to make it official when they got married in 1967. You know, I interviewed dad the other day and I must share the story with you because mom would not want to see those faces down there. She wanted to see smiles. Please smile because that's what she would want. When I spoke to Mr. Smith, he told me, you know, I met her the same time that Kendall crashed. You remember that Kendall crash when the train crashed at Kendall? It happened on a Monday, the 1st of September, and this was an impromptu. He did not know that I was going to ask him any questions. He was just giving it to me like this. He said, it, it happened on the Monday, and the Friday, he saw this beautiful young lady. And when he looked at her, he thought, yes, I have to talk to her. And he said he approached her, and boy, that's where it began. But you know what was most interested as we spoke, and I think Steve was right there. Um, he said when she decided to go away, one of his friends said to him, you married her before she leave, man. And he said, no. If she's really interested and really love me, she will come back. And he said during her stay in England, because she went on to, to England, every single week they wrote each other's love letters. Every single week one was coming to him and one was going to her. Then he looked at me and he said, Patricia, I miss her. And I've never tried to change her. She is who she is. And I accepted her for who she was, and I'm going to miss her. Oh, let me, right. Okay, so the union of over 55 years produced two sons, Hugh, otherwise known as Tony, and Steve. Both sons remember mom as being caring, loving, and a God-fearing woman who ensured that her family participated in daily devotional exercises. She enjoyed providing godly counsel and encouragement to her sons. Also, I'm going to refer to her as a daughter, even though it's daughter-in-law, Debbie. She would always provide counsel and encouragement for her as well. Mom loved to take trips. Hence, taking family bee trips was one of her favorite things to do, which the entire family agreed and enjoyed. Mom's love for the Lord was very evident. She was passionate about her Christian walk. Hence, it did not come as a surprise when she made the decision to get baptized and become a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in 1973. Throughout her Christian journey, she was active in several areas of the church, and you would have heard some of them. Health ministry, Sabbath school, choir, community outreach, just to name a few. Mom believed showing love and gratitude regardless of what is happening around her. Hence, instead of celebrating birthday like we normally do, mom decided that on her birthday, I remember both of us came up with the name together, she wanted to do what is called prayer of gratitude, where she would ask pastor, I think Pastor West did it um, in January. I can't, don't remember the date right now. But just prior to her birthday, I think it was the 8th of January, um, she wanted a prayer of gratitude where she gave God thanks for sparing her life and asked that her friends and well-wishers join 
in giving God thanks for life. On Sunday, the 23rd of January, I got a text. Mom wasn't feeling well. She was taken to Hargreaves Memorial Hospital. And I can tell you, she was given the best care possible. Not only by the doctors and the nurses, but also by family members. However, on Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022, her condition took a turn for the worse. And at approximately 5.20 p.m., the Lord decided it was time for her to rest from this troubled world. Her fight was over. Her journey on earth had ended. And life as we knew it with her will be no more. Mom was committed, devoted, and knew that when life on earth has ended, we will meet again. She is survived by her husband, Clinton Smith, children, Steve, Hugh, daughter-in-law Debbie, her sister Sylvia King in the UK, niece Yvonne Foster, UK, grandnephew Lee Foster, UK, nephews Colin and Tony Brumfield, they're in the USA. And I don't want to get into trouble to start calling friends because I might miss someone. Her auntie, Essie Rogers, and a lot of friends, both overseas and here, all missed her, our church family. And personally, my mom is no longer with me, and I miss her. God bless you. Amen. Wow, that was truly an outstanding eulogy. Thank you, Sister Reed. And I'm sure that we were all enriched by the words that, and sentiments that were shared. At this time, we will pause to reflect on God's word. For in God's word, we can find the comfort, the hope, the assurance that we need to get us through times of uncertainty, times of grief. And I'm truly thrilled this afternoon to know that our senior pastor, Pastor Francis West, will be the instrument through which the Holy Spirit will communicate his message. Uh, before Pastor West comes to present the homily, uh, we will be the recipients of a special musical item, a meditation song by Sister Andrea Young. Great is thy faithfulness. Also, like just before I sing, I would just also like to remember that I remember Sister Smith as being the first female elder of Mandeville Church, the first female ever to hold that post. And um, I remember that very well. Okay. <laughs> Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not.
unforeseen and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings on mine with ten thousand beside great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all that I need in thy hands have provided to thy great faithfulness mercy and love great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have need thy hand hath provided It is thy faithfulness. Thank you, Sister Young. Truly, God is a faithful God and He is always good to His children. And we come today to give God thanks for the life of one who was a true Christian, an extraordinary woman, a woman of faith. She was not just a nurse, a teacher, but she was a child of God. And that is what makes the difference. She was a child of God. Whenever I visited her home, she was always thinking about carrying me to someone. Her neighbor is probably here. When her neighbor lost her husband, I didn't know I was just visiting in the community and I stopped by her home. And she said, Pastor, I'm going to take you to my neighbor. She lost her husband. And she took me there. And we prayed. And when Sister Smith was not well, her neighbor called me. And her neighbor said, I've got to be there for her. She was there for me. That was the woman. She touched the lives of her neighbors, of everyone. And they, in turn, supported her when she was not well because of the love she poured upon them all. Truly, Sister Smith was always thinking about people. Whenever she called me to pray, it was not so much about her. It was about those whom she knew, those whom she worked with, nurses, her children, you, Steve, um, and everyone. She's saying, Pastor, don't forget their names. Call them Pastor when you pray. I want you to know you and Steve, she loved you. But she had many other children. When I went to her home, I met, I believe, Dalton at the back right there. And I met others who were in her home. They called her mother and she called them children. That was the woman 
And so today, permit me to use the old proverbial, we need to take our caps off and salute a woman who lived out her life of faith. And so today, please, ex please accept our deepest condolences, members of the family, and we want you to know that we will continue to pray for you, with you, and give our support as a church because we too have been impacted by the love this woman had for us. So permit me just to share, I believe, from the book of Philippians 1, verse 21, what our life was like. And this was what Paul said he lived for. He said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Will you bow your heads with me as we pray? Father, speak to our hearts even now to comfort, to give strength and support to the family and for all of us who are gathered here today in Jesus' name. For me to live is Christ. Written by the Apostle Paul, he was a man whose life was lived to reveal Christ as Sister Smith's life was lived. Paul did not allow circumstances to overcome him, but he often, turned, he often turned them into opportunities to glorify and magnify God. He was imprisoned and in chains, but he used it as an opportunity to win many to Christ. His sole aim in living was to glorify Christ. This was the single purpose of his life, a purpose which he devoted himself with a singleness as those who pursue the things of the world. Paul knew that there is nothing meaning to life without Christ. Christ was the center of his life. His reason for living, his problems, which were many, were seen as a light affliction. He knew Christ. He lived for Christ. He loved Christ. Christ was the central focus of his life. He considered all things loss sake for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. More than riches and position was to have a knowledge of Christ. This was what Paul lived for. His goal was to know as much as he could of Christ. Why? In order that he may reveal Christ to all persons. You see, Christ is the light and the life of all men. And as Christians, this should be our sole preoccupation to know as much as we can about Jesus. Because you see, Jesus is the second Adam. In him, heaven and earth are linked. In him, God and man are united. In every temptation that we face, he, Jesus, has provided a way of escape for us. For every difficulty we face, his grace is sufficient for us. And this is the reason why today in this Thanksgiving service we are not here to be saddened. We are here to be thankful for the God who has given us Sister Smith. You see, when Paul was alone, when he was locked away in prison, he found happiness and comfort because he had communion with Jesus. There is nothing that is more fulfilling and more liberating in this life than to know Jesus. And this is what I believe. I believe that my dear sister Smith knew Jesus. I believe she knew him with her heart. You see, my last visit to her at the hospital, and I call you while I was there, proved to me that she loved Jesus. She was sleeping peacefully. And I called the nurse, and I spoke with the nurse. And the nurse said to me that her condition is one where she was she was able to speak just a week before, but now she's not speaking. But she said, she's a beautiful lady. That's what the nurse said, a beautiful lady. The peace that was around her showed the peace of God. She had a peace that passed all understanding, that despite what was happening to her, you could see that peace when you looked upon her face. And I want to say to you, this can only be found in Jesus. This peace can only be found in Jesus. But it is so sad. It is so sad today that our society is living more and more for the things of the world. 
the pursuit of worldly fame and success, the pursuit of a life of pleasure and sex has led many to reject and depart from Christ and live for self. But the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end of it is death. The Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once and then comes the judgment. So permit me to say that if for you to live is money, then you are going to leave it all behind when you die. If for you to live is power, when you die, you will lose all the power you had. If for you to live is for self, then when you die, it's going to be loss. If for you to live is for fame, then when you die, you will be forgotten. But if for you to live is Christ, if for you to live is Christ, then when you die, it's gain. It's gain. You know, I remember the story of a boy who was dying from a terrible sickness. He had only one functioning kidney. His chance of living was very slim. But he heard of a young girl who needed a kidney to live. And the young boy, not knowing this girl, gave the girl his kidney shortly after he died. And when the town heard about it, they built a monument in honor of that boy. You see, I want you to know that God has built a monument in honor of Jesus Christ. God has built a monument in honor of Jesus Christ because the Bible is clear that all of us have sinned, subject to death and pain and sorrow, but God, in his infinite love for us, gave us a second chance by sending his only begotten son to die for our sins. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God has made a monument of the name of Jesus Christ because that name is exalted above every name. For there is no other name whereby we can be saved but by the name of Jesus Christ. And at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every knee should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. God has exalted that name and made a monument of the name of Jesus Christ. What am I saying to us today? And those who are watching us, Jesus Christ is all that we need. Jesus Christ is all that we need. In fact, Jesus is our peace because he's called the Prince of Peace. We will never have peace in this life until we know Jesus. He brings peace to our soul. But he's our justification. He's our sanctification. And soon he will be our glory. In him we are blameless. In him we are pardoned from our sin. In him we are preserved and kept by his power. Through his mercy and his grace we are saved from sin. Jesus is all that we need. And this is what Sister Smith lived for. To show Jesus. She lived for Christ. For her to live was Christ. Those who really knew her. Those who visited her. We know that this is all that was on her heart. She would call me whenever we have a crusade. Rarely a member called me, rarely when we have a crusade. And she would say, Pastor, there are some persons that I'm inviting on our platform. And I want you to recognize them, Pastor, because I want them to know Jesus. This was the woman thinking about people. For her to live was Christ. For her to live was Christ. She thought about people who do not have a saving relationship with Christ. You see, we owe everything to Jesus. Everything. We must therefore live as Christians to magnify Jesus. To let people see the glory of who Jesus really is. I've learned something about the stars and the telescope. You see, stars are much bigger than the telescope. Yet, the telescope magnifies and brings them closer. And this is what Sister Smith's life was like. She magnified and brought Christ closer to people. And this is what our life should be. This is what Christ wants the believer's life to be like. We must be like a telescope that brings Jesus Christ close to people. That when they see us through our words and our actions, they will say, we are children of God. They will say, you have brought Jesus to us. Nothing, nothing in this life can steal a man's joy 
when he lives with Jesus. Nothing in this life can ever be disappointed when a man lives for Christ. For even in death, the Bible says there is gain. So absolutely nothing can steal this from a person who lives for Christ. Because the one thing that most humans fear, death, the Bible says it's gain for the child of God who lives for Christ. And why is it gain? Well, here's where I close. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. So it's gain. Why is it gain? Because Jesus says, I am the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. It's gain for the child of God. And Paul captures it in these words. He says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of God, with the trump of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those which are alive and remain shall be caught up in the air to meet him, and so they will be with him forever. And then he says these words, comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another. So this is why we are not saddened, you and Steve. We are here to comfort one another with the words of Jesus Christ. Soon, as I close, soon we will have a thousand year vacation with Jesus. Soon, when we have this thousand year vacation and it is ended, then there will be a new earth and we will come to this new earth and we shall run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. We shall mount up with wings of eagles. The kingdom of God shall be in the midst of his people on this earth and we shall see his face and we shall reign with him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. For me to live is Christ. Thank you very much, Pastor West, for the very timely, most appropriate message for all of us. It's a mature sermon for a mature audience. And that's the audience that we have here today. We are just so delighted that God has spoken and humbled that his message has come to each heart. We will be praying at this time for the members of the bereaved family, Brother Smith, I know him as CL. He was my taxi driver when I was teaching at Spaulding's High School in 1980. So he used to carry me to school. He don't remember that because he doesn't remember that. But we are very humbled at this occasion and um, we are going to invite the rest of the congregation to stand. We are inviting the family members to remain seated. That's Brother Smith, Brother Hugh Smith and his dear wife Debbie and Steve. Uh, Steve is not here today, is it? Where is Steve? Ah, oh, there you go. There you go. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray? Our kind Heavenly Father, we pause in your awesome presence, humbled by the fact that you have been here with us and that you have spoken to our hearts. And we thank you for the privilege that we can celebrate the life of one who has lived a full life in you, in service to your God and to humanity. We thank you for the legacy that she has left for us, for his family. And it is our prayer that you will gift us with the capacity to walk the way Jesus walked and to allow you to live your life also in our daily experiences. We want to present to you Brother Ciel, 
who has spent so many years together with his dear wife. And now there is this emptiness. But we do know, God, that anything that's empty can be filled by you. And so we ask that you will be his companion, that you will be his guide and stay, that the support that he needs help him to find this as he leans on you as John, the beloved disciple. Pray that you will bring him the comfort and the consolation that's necessary. And at all times, stick to him closer than a brother. We pray that you'll be with the children, Hugh and Steve and Debbie, that as they rally together, they will find comfort and consolation in the company of each other. And that they will rest secure that hope keeps faith alive and that their faith will soon be realized in sight. We pray that you will continue to protect them, that you will help that those who can give them the visit or the comfort that they need, will be, it will be provided. And that the church will continue to pray them up and to visit. But above all else, O oh God, as you did for Job, we pray that you will create an edge around them. That their lives will be preserved in you. We anticipate that the coming of Jesus will see us all heralded into his eternal kingdom. And it is our hope that all present here today will see Jesus when he comes. We pray that you will restore those who have fallen away from you. And we pray that you will keep everyone connected to Jesus the true vine. We pray that you will bring forgiveness and healing and that you will strengthen our that we will always walk with you in the light of your word. We just want to thank you, Lord, for that which you have done for the family and for us as a church. And that you'll bless us that we will continue to labor in your cause until our time is ended. Strengthen our faith, O oh God, and our resolve. And keep hope alive in each heart. And thank you so much for hearing and for answering. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The place of interment that is in Melrose, that's the Melrose Cemetery Land Settlement, that's below Royal Flat. The route shall be along the highway, New Green Roundabout, down to the Williamsfield Roundabout upright, and then I guess it's the first left or the second left. Follow the hearse. And we shall be having a, a good time. To send us on our way, we will be using as our closing song, When all my labors and trials are o'er, first and last. At the closing of that song, we will go. The earth will be preceded by the pastor's car followed by the members of the immediate family, and then all of us will follow behind. It has been our pleasure serving you, Pastor Wes, our senior pastor, Pastor Zachary Headley, our junior pastor, and I, your humble servant. Shall we stand on the closing number? <laughs>